Absolutely. Plan A so and Plan we don't B. Require that now. We do require it by statute. We don't do it by practice. The department says a fit and willing relative. I say, what does that mean? You don't have a name here. I need a name. I need an address. I need to see a person's face. I want that person in court. I don't want the promise that we're going to find somebody someday. And that's what I get, is a promise that we're going to find somebody someday. Now, they're, they're getting much better at doing that work. If I read the best interest standard, we have to consider everything. Judge Teske, the way that I read the best interest standard is that we are required to look at everything and consider everything. The weight we give it is up to us. But under the best interest standard, I, my belief is that we have to consider that report. That, that is correct. In fact, I would consider an abuse of discretion not to It's, the legislation's there. That's that's a the, that's, yes. That's where you're falling down. I yes. Mean, I mean, you first would say, I wish we could clone hundred of you and see. But we don't. That would scare that's, everybody. Well, actually, <laughs> 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 you have this uh, novel, but we're not doing, I say you again, we, the state, you, the uh, Juvenile Justice Council, is not doing a good job in training. I don't think, as a legislator. And that's where you, you know, well, maybe money, but for God's sake, you can also not have everybody come to one central location. You go around the state and hold seminars and pull the judges in for three or four counties to do it rather than waiting for once a year to do it. And yes, what regional do trainings. Do what do we do in the council to get the mm -hmm. right training done? Well, you have to understand that regional stuff also makes sense because you share, share similar issues. Uh, right. If none of you have been to the judges meeting up in Northwest Georgia, the Northwest judges meet on a regular basis, and it... Why does it become a requirement in your council? The judges control that issue. Really? Well, that I can't answer because I've been advocating for that, and I'm the one who set it up by having district representatives. I'm the one who changed the governance structure for the Council of Juvenile Court Judges by regions, so... Within the council, we got to get those judges to understand there's ways of solving that problem if they just take it as an issue and work with it. I, I can't disagree that regional meetings would be effective, Ashley. One of the areas, I'm sorry, I apologize, you're next. One of the areas that I think, and you did an excellent presentation, is the, um, the impact that all of the transitions, as you talked about, has on a child's learning. Yes. The aspect of the number of schools, and I know Valerie's represented Fulton County Schools, but the number of schools that these children go in and out of, not finishing a grade in one school. We see, we see young people come into higher ed and they have 12 and 13 and 14 transcripts. We have children not learning to read. We are, we're looking at all the health and mental health issues we have to, but education is the key for these young people to survive. I also say that with us being those of us who represent the 31 <coughs> state universities, and the number of us that have accredited social work programs, we're available to help and assist in some of the training that is done. Our social work professors are doing this to prepare the generation of social workers that will work in DFACs and other state agencies. I think it's important to separate the caseworker from the social worker who has a degree. The degree social worker, we need more of them in the courts as well as, and many of them have been trained with Title IV funds and we need those funds we know to return so that we can continue to educate. Because you, you carefully said constantly a, pro, a professional who's been trained, properly trained, and we know that this is one of the areas that that training exists. So at your state universities, there, are, there, there is this um, qualification that these um, professionals are receiving. But use your state institutions and let us assist in ways that we can but if we, if we fail that child educationally, 
They are going to they are going to be back where their parents are. They are that we don't have a chance if they do not get educated in our in our school system. And we need to address that. There's not enough social workers in the public schools. The, the counselors aren't able to do it. And the teachers see them for a brief time and they're snatched back and they go back and they come back again. And we know we're failing this, this um, group of, of children um, educationally. And we have to address that as well, I believe. Well, the number one quality I want in a caseworker, the number one quality I want in an attorney, and the number one quality I want in a judge is the ability to maintain formed relationships because it is the art of engagement, of building relationships that, get, that makes change. So yes, even when you've got parents with substance abuse issues, if you've got someone who has that ability to engage and to coach and to mentor, you can get people to change that you didn't think were ever possible. If any of you have the opportunity to see the story in the AJC for my Family Drug Treatment Court, there was a woman that came into my court so addicted that she could not stand. We had to keep her in a wheelchair. And I was one of the people on the Family Drug Court team saying, we're wasting our time. I don't think we should take her. The rest of the team was like, no, try, try, try. Let me tell you what. She is doing an outstanding job of parenting three girls as a single parent and she has a very good job with Walmart who is a second chance employer and she has been incredibly successful for more than two years and I honestly did not think she had the ability to do it. So when you have really good people, you can have really good outcomes. Good welcome. I want to say I appreciate you and Judge Hammond and Judge Tiller. That's just above and beyond just being in the county doing your job and going out and doing these type of trainings and things. Sad thing is in some parts, especially in my area, our juvenile judges know disrespect, but we're, we're just kind of there and not educating. Another thing that you always say is we're, we have a, a foster parent. Uh, we're very concerned about the low number of foster parents. Our foster homes are full and good committed foster parents, as you know, and we only get five days rest of the year. As you've already said, we cannot just go to grandma's house, leave those kids and go. The requirements for other folks to do rest for us, you know, there's those home inspections and criminal backgrounds. Some people are kind of reluctant to do that. So we need, we need foster parents and um, we can burn out after a while. And, well, these children, no disrespect to them either, but they're not always the normal biological child. They've got issues and problems you have to work with day to day. Discipline, procedures, all those things are a lot different. But on the part of relative search, I've dealt with issues where there's been children in foster care 33, 36 months. Both parents' rights have been terminated the foster parents have agreed and ready to adopt these children. We're talking about newborns coming in. As you already said, that bond is so great between that family and that child, that basically that newborn is the only family they've ever known. If I understand statute correctly, they can be going through the process, but until that adoption is final, I just got a call last week from the county where these relatives, all of a sudden just relatives. Those relatives, they qualify in all respects, that child is going to go to those relatives. That's why I'm cautioning about the new statute and why the court needs to be very diligent in making findings and cutting off a period and say, we're not doing diligent search, we have a home for this child. So that's why I'm being very precautionary and saying, do it up front, do it in the first 90 days, do it right and be thorough. So I'm not talking about violating anybody's due process. And I'm not talking about not trying to find family. But I'm saying do what's best for that child, which is get that child to permanency before their first birthday or within 365 days of the time you remove them. But do not wait after you've had them in a family for three years and then find them a whole new family that they've never met. That's terrible. If out there, it's they're terrible. They're out there. It they're is terrible practice. Here's the thing. And it's, it's what's in the best interest of the child. There's two things that must be demonstrated. Grounds for termination of parental rights and number two is in the best interest. Now, juvenile court judges, 
if, if, if they're reversed on appeal, it's usually on the second one, right, Judge? Best interest. But we need to understand something. Us judges need to understand that it cuts both ways. When three, three years goes by, and this, the, only, the only stable home this child knows are those foster parents that adopt pre-adopted home. It's no longer in the best interest of the child to remove that child from that home. My position is, and I've been there and I've had TPR cases where relatives have been found at the last moment, and I say no go. I've seen it that way around, Judge. I understand. I understand. I understand, but with the appointment of attorneys for children, I think it will change how things go. <coughs> children will have their rights represented in the court by an attorney. And is it only the judge that can terminate the parental rights? I mean, can you have a situation where um, the, uh, the, the DFAC's caseworker and, and CASA and everybody saying this child should not be returned and the judge can override that? or? Uh, yes, a judge can override it. What's done by the department is a recommendation. What's done by attorney is a recommendation. But can the court go against the recommendation and make a direct placement? Yes. But again, keep in mind that we're talking about having the right to appeal those decisions and that children will have attorneys who will be able to do appeals. Things that have never been appealed before are likely to be appealed, particularly if we're dealing with child welfare specialists in the future. So I think there are going to be some checks on the process. Because. <laughs> Judge Walker, with the, uh, with the climate looking different now, as DTAC moves forward and opportunities are opening up. And if reunification is not an option for children, is there a possibility to look at a different family model that could possibly stand in the gap for children? Uh, there's a lot of agencies here in the room that uh, would love to serve these children and have long-term uh, homes and, and agencies that could see them through to adulthood. Um, and they're not, it's not congregate care as it was known in the past. Can you elaborate on what you mean by model is to Okay, um, well, for instance, our Winchuck Homes model, where you employ two full-time house parents that are committed as, as a couple for a lifetime. It's not a job, it's, it's a ministry. That they come and they are committed to stay with these children until they graduate or go or get married. We send them through to college. We have their weddings. They still come home for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So it is a long-term, we take guardianship. It's a legal guardianship type of, of family, and it is a family model, as, uh, as opposed to um, a therapeutic group home that children go to for services for a short period of time, or sometimes long, or a group home where they have to live for the rest of their life with uh, staff coming in now. So I, I'm just thinking ahead, is there a kind of a model, a family model that could be developed that we could all get on board with that would satisfy um, another niche, since there are not enough foster homes that we maybe could serve in that capacity? That would be something we would have to, as a state, go to the administration of children and families because the issue has been not recognizing that as a form of permanency, um, and that's a federal issue. But it, the model yeah. that has been developed is an excellent model, and we have the ability to do permanent <coughs> guardianships, but it's just that we're accustomed to do permanent guardianships to a person as opposed to an entity. So <coughs> there are some legal issues, there's some federal issues, and Right now, the political will is not looking at that type of a setting. And, and I think it has to do with the research that's coming out on sexual exploitation. But am I open to that? Yes. Have I seen models like that that are wonderful for our children? Absolutely. Should we consider that? Yes. Just one more, Your Honor. 